Hello. This discussion relates to the family of Gomard IV arms. Uh, we have arms uh, left, arms right. We have arms that are single purpose for IV and multi purpose for IV, IM, and sub Q, and of course intradermal. And we also have an arm that adds arterial capability. Now, what we're going to show you today is our basic uh, multi purpose IV arm, IV, IM, sub Q and show you some of the features about that and most importantly uh, we will show you how to remove the skin and the veins uh, and repair the arm in the field. Now when you receive the arm at your location it comes in this convenient carry case, very portable and uh, we're going to open it up and uh, unzip And this is what you're going to see after you open it. We have a, a small accessory case here containing some talcum powder, containing a squeeze bulb, and a, a small wrench. This is your spare arm skin. This contains your blood concentrate. And this elevates the blood bag so that fluid can be placed here and then flow into the arm and then drain out. Now, this can be removed and the squeeze ball put into place in this fashion. And this pumped up. At this point, the elements are in place, and note that the arm itself can be rotated at about this point. In order to rotate the arm from this position to another one, just unsnap here, the back or front, hold this in place, and rotate to any position that you're interested in. We have veins here on the arm. We have an, an IM site here, an intradermal site here. Moving back around to the initial position, we have veins in this area, veins here, and an intradermal position here. Snap this back into position, if that's where we'd like to start. And we can use any of these veins for our, our IV access. What I suggest you do when doing IV access, try a 22 or 23 gauge uh, needle. The uh, smaller the needle, the longer the life of your skin and your veins. Um, if, you, if you're starting with a group of students, have them practice using the uh, IV access without any water or any blood here. Have them get the technique, the low angle of, in, of insertion, the bell up, and so on. Then once they rotate through that, put some clear tap water in here. Have them do it again. Have them pull back on the syringe, see the fluid, exit the vein. The veins themselves are made of latex. The latex that we've chosen is a highly purified form so that it's delivered to us in a way that's below the level of allergenicity. However, the outside skin on the arm is not made of latex, it's made of vinyl. The vinyl skin itself is designed so that it can be removed and replaced. Using a relatively small size needle, uh, you can get hundreds of procedures out of this very portable in, uh, injection arm. At some point, you're going to want to replace it. You'll want to remove the skin as well as perhaps change out the veins. Now we're going to show you that procedure. Now we have removed the arm from the base and we're going to show you how to replace the skin as well as the veins. We have all the elements here in place. The spare skin, we have the talcum powder, we have an Allen wrench, and which are supplied and we've added 
either a hair dryer or a hand electric heater to facilitate the operation. Now we'll begin the process. Leaving the skin slightly all around to facilitate the removal of the skin. Now we're rotating it to heat the other side. And the process is now complete. Now we're ready to remove the skin. We heated the skin and uh, we're removing it. Notice that the skin slides off the arm. As the skin is removed, the various injection pads are replaced on the table. As we remove the skin, you're seeing the intradermal site, you're seeing the veins, as well as the subcutaneous injection site. And the process is now complete. At this point there are two choices. One, we could replace the skin in reverse order as seen before. Or two, we could now remove the shoulder so that we can go ahead and begin to remove the veins. Now we're going to start the removal of the shoulder and this is how it's done. Notice the Allen wrench is inserted here and Notice that she's rotating that, and this removes the screw holding the shoulder to the arm. Now we are re ready to remove the screw. The screw is set aside, and now we're going to remove the shoulder from the arm in that fashion. Now we're going to remove the click valve on the outlet as well as the metal connector on the inlet. Now we're going to pull the tubes out of the shoulder, set the shoulder aside, and remove the veins first from the arm, then from the hand. Notice that above the hand there is an excess sight. Notice what we have here is one long continuous vein that's rather easily removed. And now we're finished and we're ready to begin reversing the process and we'll show you that now. Now we're ready to begin putting the veins into the arm. Now note that we're starting high on the arm, pulling the vein through, Now we're taking the other end and inserting the other end there and we're using that access hole to pull the vein through and now we're going to insert the vein from the inside out
up into the hand, using the access hole again, pulling it back through, adjusting the length of the veins slightly. Coming back through, pulling the vein out of the ulnar region of the arm. Pulling a little bit more through. Now we're going to come up the long vein back inside the arm. Just feed it in slowly. Now we're going to let gravity work for us. Put a little bit more vein in and watch the vein appear in the access hole again. Now we're going to pull the vein through the access hole and we'll show you how that's done. Now the vein is reinserted into the access hole, pulled out through the hand, pulled through, and the tip of the latex is again inserted, pushed through, pick it up again from the access hole. Now we're going to pull the vein through. Coming out near the thumb, pulling it through, laying the vein down the long of the arm, putting the vein through and out the top. At this point, notice that we've used a single piece of latex tube, and what we're doing is we're adjusting the lengths to have them even. And the process right now is basically complete. Notice how we've used the access port rather significantly. And everything is being smoothed out, drawn in place. And that's it. Now we're going to attach the shoulder to the arm. And we're going to do that by taking the longer of the two tubes and we're going to insert that tube through the inside of the shoulder and it's going to exit the first hole which is located nearest the interface. Now we place the two tubes through the shoulder as you can see and we're ready to begin preparing to attach the shoulder to the arm. And In order to do that we'll first heat the interface with either a uh, heat gun or any other hot air device that you have in your area. This softens the material and allows you to first place the connecting rod through, comes out the arm, and notice that we're attaching that to the receptacle in the shoulder. Placing the shoulder onto the arm, there's a small tooth in the shoulder that fits inside the receptacle in the arm, and then we'll continue to thread the connecting bolt that holds the arm to the shoulder securely. Now we've attached the shoulder and uh, tightened up the lead screw, and we're ready to put on the skin. And in order to get started, we're going to use a little heat to make the skin a little more pliable. Notice that we're doing it on both sides. And now we're going to add a little bit of that talcum powder down in the skin. And we're going to position the arm 
Put the skin on. Pull down over the fist. Notice how easily it slips on. We're going to insert the interdermal sites and the subcutaneous sites as we do. Pulling the skin over the fist. Insert the other interdermal site as well as the pulling the skin down a bit further. Now the skin is on the hand. Put the other induction site into place. Bring the skin forward and finally uh, smooth it out. Now that we've put the skin onto the arm, we're now going to put the arm onto the base. We're going to place the arm on the base with the uh, palm in the up position. And we're going to bring the wrist snap over. These snaps are just to hold the arm in place when you're doing your procedures. Now we're going to attach the water or blood inlet. And we're ready to go. Now, what we've shown is after a lot of uses of needle on the skin and the vein, it may be necessary to change the skin or the veins. And in order to do that, we've shown how the skin is first removed and then the veins. Now, note that the skin can be re removed and replaced on its own if you wish. And note that this simulator has been used many, many years all over the world, and it is a rather sturdy, rather rugged, but also portable and versatile device. Thanks for your attention. We hope you've enjoyed it.